In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My sisters and brothers, here am I in a new role, yet again with you, Faith Community of St. Martin's. And I'm really joyous, really um, humbled to be able to join you with this celebration of the Eucharist. In these times with all that we face, um, we hear challenges from God for us to listen carefully and see how we have journeyed with a God who is faithful. And so as we begin this Mass, the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross, um, this Eucharist in a special way celebrating Corpus Christi, Jesus' body and blood given up for us, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary of a Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who in this wonderful sacrament have left us a memorial of your passion, Grant us, we pray, so to revere the sacred mysteries of your body and blood, that we may always experience in ourselves the fruits of your redemption. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses spoke to the people. Remember the long way that the Lord your God has led you these 40 years in the wilderness? He did that in order to humble you, testing you to know what was in your heart, whether or not you would keep his commandments. He humbled you by letting you hunger and then by feeding you with manna with which neither you nor your ancestors were acquainted in order to make you understand that man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. Do not exalt yourself, forgetting the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, who led you through the great and terrible wilderness and arid wasteland with poisonous snakes and scorpions. He made water flow from flint rock and fed you in the wilderness with manna that your ancestors did not know in order to humble you and to test you and in the end to do you good. Brothers and sisters, word of the Lord. Oh, 
First letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, the cup of blessing that we bless, is it not the sharing in the blood of Christ? The bread that we break, is it not a sharing in the body of Christ? Because there is one bread, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one bread. My brothers and sisters, the word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to the people, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give you for the life of the world is my flesh. The people then disputed among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Jesus said to them, Very truly, I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. And whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. For my flesh is true food and my blood true drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, I live because of the Father. So whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Not like that which your ancestors ate and they died. But the one who eats this bread will live forever. Jesus said these things while he was teaching in the synagogues in Capernaum. My brothers and sisters, our salvation, the gospel of the Lord. My sisters and brothers, today as we celebrate, as I mentioned, Corpus Christi, this um, Latin term which means the body of Christ. It's officially called the most holy body and blood of Christ. You know, this is an interesting time for us to be celebrating this. It's been quite some time that uh, many of you have not been able to attend Mass. It's been quite some time since many of you have been able to receive Jesus in the Eucharist. And there's a hunger within many of your hearts. There's a feeling of being almost in a desert, in a wilderness, that we recognize and we know that Jesus can come to us in our homes. We recognize and we feel Jesus in a way in our hearts deeply. Yet sometimes we know that we crave something more. That something more may be this idea of us receiving Jesus truly in the Eucharist, This idea may also be what we heard in the second reading from the Corinthians, which speaks about 
many are we, but we form one body. We miss being part of this fellowship of our St. Martin's family where we physically feel all together. It's hard for us to celebrate a feast like this when we feel so very far away and we're not able to feel and receive Jesus as we do in Mass. Our readings today encourage us to see that this is a part of the history of the world. This is a part of the history of salvation. The Israelites going through the wilderness knew hunger. They knew what it felt to be like abandoned. They knew and they felt it. And we have in this reading from Deuteronomy this reminder never to forget the Lord. Never to forget the journey we have been through because it's easy, my sisters and brothers, when we overcome obstacles, when we overcome hurdles, we say, thank you, God, and then we move on. We have a reminder from Deuteronomy that as we continue to go through these weeks and these months and these times of strife and struggle in so many ways, we have a reminder that when that tomorrow comes, because it indeed it will come, we are urged and reminded to never forget. To never forget the crucified Lord Jesus who died for us. To never forget that there is such a connection between the body of Christ that we receive in Mass at Communion and the body of Christ which hung upon a cross. Because it is through his suffering that he showed his love. At the Last Supper, giving us his body, his blood, his soul, divinity, giving us himself, he gave us himself on the cross on Good Friday. We have a reminder in the suffering of so many persons. You know, after a while, it's been some months, and we think about and we hear about the pandemic, but so many people still suffer in hospitals. And we have a reminder as their bodies lie needing help and needing healing, we have a reminder of Jesus himself laying his body and his life down for us, the body of Christ, laid on that cross, laid on hospital beds. And in this, these weeks where we have felt and we have seen and we have cried from our hearts about topics of racial injustice, we see and we feel the way that we have seen society and we have seen the body of human beings, the life of human beings, the soul of human beings being desecrated. This is a yet again a way of the body of Christ feeling suffering. Because my sisters and brothers, when one of us is, is hurt or suffered or injured in the human family, all of us must feel that. Going right back to our second reading, we who are many are one body, for we all partake in the one bread. So we hear in these readings today an encouragement for us to never separate the body that is the church. The body that we receive in Mass, that today um, we will be able to sacramentally, I would receive, but all of us spiritually would receive Jesus. And we have the body of Jesus laid out on the cross. And we have the, body of so the bodies of so many people who suffer, even ourselves who find ourselves suffering. What was it that kept God faithful when the Israelites struggled through their wilderness? They questioned, they were tempted, they even doubted God. What was it that makes God show this faithful love? It is a love that has no limits and no measure. That God so loved the world he would send his only son. Sometimes we forget that that story continues. He sent his only son to die on a cross to suffer for us. Today, as we celebrate body of Christ, we celebrate we who are the body of Christ. That even virtually, that even from our distance, and even missing seeing each other, we are connected yet again. Because we are the body of Christ. In so many ways, in so many places, celebrating this wonderful, special feast and this special day in the church, we celebrate who we truly are. A people who have a faithful God, in the midst of all that we face. Jesus himself is teaching in the synagogue and the gospel in John. And we have this dispute coming up. How is this man promising us his flesh, his blood? 
Any of us who have Jewish friends will know that this is absolutely scandalous in that time and in this culture. For someone to promise to feed and to give and to partake and have any involvement with the flesh and blood is absolutely unacceptable in Jesus' time and culture. And yet Jesus remains committed to his purpose and his mission. Jesus himself names himself as a living bread come down from heaven. How we hunger for justice. How we hunger for renewal in the world. How we hunger for healing for so many people who are in pain. In this feast, as we think about the body, as we think about the group, as we think about the family of the church, we are reminded of Jesus. We are reminded of the ultimate love of God. We are reminded that we look upon this body and we see suffering and we see love. Jesus who chose, Jesus who accepted the mission of his Father to die for love of us. We pray that as we continue to fight on, as we continue to hold on strong as a body of Christ, we pray that no one else will ever have to lose their life innocently. And we reflect on the ancestors there in the desert, the Israelites, that they were promised and they received this bread from heaven in their own hunger. This bread provided for their physical needs and their physical hunger. But Jesus is promising that he is the bread that brings eternal life. That beyond all that we feel within our hearts, all that we feel within our souls, that is a greater to more eternal life promised to us by Jesus. My sisters and brothers, as we see history unfolding, as we feel all of the strife, as we feel so many feelings within ourselves as a society, as a culture, and personally, may we carry on. May we carry on, carry on knowing that there is a tomorrow, that Jesus who died out of love for us has called us to be the body, his body, wounded, struggling, scarred, but one. We as a Christian people need to be the hope we as a Christian people need to be the sign of unity. We as a Christian people, indeed, we accept we are wounded as the body of Christ. We don't try to appear in any way that we're perfect. We appear as we are, struggling together, united together, in our hunger, trusting in this eternal life of Jesus. It's really a blessing to be able to share with you um, this homily. We really never know the plan of God. Um, I said my goodbye some weeks ago as a deacon, um, and I'm really grateful to Father Kelly for this opportunity to celebrate Mass with you. Um, we'll always treasure the journey that I've been able to have with you as the St. Martin's family, and the ways that you've nourished me as a deacon and now nourished me as a priest. We continue to pray for one another as we continue through with the celebration of the Mass. And now we profess our faith, what we believe. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. 
I believe in one holy, catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. My sisters and brothers, we present before a loving God all the needs of our hearts, all the needs that we have for our community. We pray for our world. We pray for all that we find ourselves in need of as a global community. We pray that we will be able to have greater love of our humankind, greater love of our environment, and that we will remember in a special way those who are most neglected, most marginalized and vulnerable in our society. We pray to the Lord. We pray for our church in a particular way, our St. Martin's family. We pray for they, those who may find this time separated and distant, especially difficult. Those who are lonely, those in nursing homes, those who live at home. We pray that they may be empowered by knowing that they are part of the body of Christ in our St. Martin's family, in our Catholic community. We pray to the Lord. We pray for our own needs and the needs of our families. We pray for all that we face, some that is known by others, some that others do not know. We pray that God's healing hand may be upon us for all of our needs, physical, emotional, spiritual, that the Lord of peace may reign in our hearts. We pray to the Lord. We pray for greater leadership. We pray for those who are in charge of leadership in our many countries of the world, especially here in the United States and in our church. We pray for a spirit of wisdom, a spirit of understanding, and a spirit of care for the common good in all those who are called to lead. We pray to the Lord. And I will give some time for us to pray out loud at home, together as a family, or on your own, for the prayers of your hearts, knowing that Jesus will hear you. We pray to the Lord. Hear us, O Lord, as we pray from the depths of our hearts, knowing that you are God of mercy who hears our cry, and that you, O Lord, will provide for our needs. Through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to the Almighty Father. Grant your church, O Lord, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace, whose signs are to be seen in mystery, and the offerings we here present through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, 
always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For at the last supper with his apostles, establishing for the ages to come the saving memorial of the cross, he offered himself to you as the unblemished lamb, the acceptable gift of perfect praise. Nourishing your faithful by this sacred mystery, you make them holy so that the human race bounded by one world may be enlightened by one faith and united by a bond of charity. And so we approach the table of this wondrous sacrament so that, bathed in the sweetness of your grace, we may pass over to the heavenly realities here foreshadowed. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration, and we, with all the host of angels, cry out, and without end we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and making of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, his spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Martin of Tours, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and Wilton our Bishop the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. 
Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation or deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant us peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we wait, await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. I invite those of you who have someone at home with you to share a sign of peace. And I share Christ's peace with all of you as well. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Now we invite everyone at home to join in prayer an act of spiritual communion, recognizing in a special way as we celebrate Corpus Christi, the body and blood of Jesus Christ, that Jesus indeed has made a home within each of your hearts and that once again you can invite him to be within your heart and within your soul right now where you are. Let us break bread 
to gather on our knees. Let us break bread to gather on our knees. Grant, O Lord, we pray, that we may delight for all eternity in that share in your divine life, which is foreshadowed in the present age by our reception of your most precious body and blood, who live and reign forever and ever. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Sisters and brothers, as we end Mass, I would like to share with you the words of St. Teresa of Avila, a very well-loved Carmelite saint in Spain. And these words were actually quoted by our beloved deceased Father Rich Colgan at one of his last homilies with us at St. Martin's. I think it's very apt for where we find ourselves in the world. I think it's very appropriate as well as we celebrate Corpus Christi the body of Christ, as we face the reality of bodies being desecrated on our streets. Christ has no body but yours, no hands, no feet on earth but yours. Yours are the eyes with which he looks, compassion on this world. Yours are the feet with which he walks to do good. Yours are the hands with which he blesses all the world. Yours are the hands, yours are the feet 
Yours are the eyes. You are his body. Christ has no body now but yours. No hands, no feet on earth, but yours. Yours are the eyes with which he looks. Compassion on this world. Christ has no body now on earth, but yours, but mine, but ours. We are the body of Christ. Our announcements for the Sunday. Parish Council still meeting for June. We'll meet June the 16th at 7 o'clock via Zoom. The Zumba class is now going on via Zoom. So if you if you've been part of the class before, if you just contact Jennifer, she'll give you the information. Or if you look in the bulletin on the Sunday, when we send out all the information, you'll see the bulletin on the top of the link. On there is Jennifer's email and contact. So she does Zoom, but does Zoom Zumba class. That's a mouthful. Next Sunday, our coming attractions for Father's Day, we're doing a special blessing for all the fathers, godfathers, expectant fathers, grandfathers, play fathers. Um, so invite all the men in your family to join you when you gather to pray the Mass with us. This way, when we do the blessing, you can extend your hand over their heads and pray for or with them. That's next Sunday and Father's Day, June the 21st. And if you look ahead toward the end of the month, we have a special guest appearance by Father John Mudd. So things to look forward to. Remind me, speaking of of forwarding things, I encourage you to continue forwarding the Mass to some of your family and friends, especially all those heathen folks who haven't been in church in a while. Many people have said to me, so-and-so has sent this to me, and I'm just so happy to see St. Martin's again. So you're the link to make all that happen. And also to forward to them our Pentecost concert from two weeks ago, and you will see this week a link for the Sodalities uh, photo reflection that um, Terry Remy put together. So Terry did a wonderful little reflection showing pictures of the Sedality ladies over the last number of years. So that'll be ready to, you can find that also today. I want to thank it again in a special way, Terry Remy for putting together a slideshow for Dave Kugel as he continues to do the work behind the scenes. You never see him, but without him, this wouldn't happen. In a very special way today, I want to thank not Deacon, but Father McHale. This was his first Mass for St. Martin's. And if you saw his first Mass last week, he didn't preach. Uh, Father Quinn preached. So this time, Father McHale had to do the whole Mass like the rest of us preached. He had to do the homily and the Mass. So I want to thank him in a special way. He will be going down to Trinidad in a few weeks once that country opens up. He'll be assigned to a parish to work. So I just want to really thank him for the last three years of being part of St. Martin's and being a blessing, especially to the folks in the young adult group. He helped us with Sunday school and did whatever else we asked him. So this is a blessing that today he could share with us his faith as a newly ordained priest. Birthdays I know about. Uh, Rosalind Brown's birthday is Sunday, June the 14th. A couple of days ago was Oscar Lee's birthday. And so anyone else's birthday, I don't know, have a blessed birthday, and again, thank all of you for your continued commitment to support St. Martin's through online giving, through giving through your bank, through the post office, through the front door, however, thank you very much because St. Martin's is staying alive and well because of you and your commitment to our parish.